Here's a name every bass player should know. Ronnie Baker. One of the most unsung players in the history of popular music. Ronnie Baker was a bassist, composer, arranger, producer, who, starting in the 1960s, made records with The Delphonics, Dusty Springfield, Harold Melvin and the Blue Notes, The Stylistics, The OJs, Laura Nero, Patti LaBelle, B.B. King, Jimmy Ruffin, The Manhattans, The Whispers, The Tramps, and many, many others. Like his idol, James Jamerson, Baker played a P-bass with flats and crafted an instantly recognizable sound and style on his recordings. What set Baker apart from other bass players was his peculiar way of playing a bit behind the beat. Quote, to give it a little bit of pull, explained guitarist Bobby Eli. Baker actually made up those bass lines on all the songs he played on, added the guitarist. All of them were gems of his. Baker was also the humorist of the group who always kept people laughing, recalled Eli. At the same time, he was studious and dedicated to his craft. Along with Norman Harris on guitar and Earl Young on drums, Baker made up the core of the initial version of MFSB, the in-house rhythm section for Philadelphia International Records and the go-to musicians for producers like Tom Bell and Gamble and Huff. You might not know the name, but you're gonna definitely know some of these songs. Here are my top 10 Ronnie Baker bass lines. I have always loved this bass line. From the OJ's initial release on Philadelphia International Records, it got as high as number three on the Hot 100 in October of 1972. You can clearly hear the jazz influence in this song. The groove is iconic, and Baker's fills are perfectly placed. This bass line is really simple, but it's really important. The horse was the instrumental B-side of a Cliff Noble vocal called Love Is Alright, which eventually ended up being a huge flop. The instrumental, however, sold a million copies and ended up being the first big session for Harris, Baker, and Young, all still in their 20s. Recorded at the end of 1975, Wake Up Everybody would mark the beginning of the end for Harris, Baker, and Young at Philly International Records. This record, along with the OJ's Family Reunion, are the last PIR records that this iconic rhythm section appears on. This song, made popular by Thelma Houston, was written by Gamble and Huff and recorded a full year before her version. Ronnie Baker was the first bassist to play this now iconic line. Cut as a member of the Sol Sol Orchestra, this represents some of Ronnie Baker's work after PIR. Released at the height of disco in 1976, this song has the distinction of being the first commercially available 12-inch single. The extended dance version of this song was sold in record stores and not to just DJs. Check out what he is doing on the chorus.
The Tramps were one of the projects that allowed Harris, Baker, and Young to break free from Philly International Records, partially because they weren't getting full credit for some of their musical contributions. Earl Young would actually front the group, but all three would write, produce, and play on the songs in the studio. Released in 1976, this song had two lives. In 1977, it got as high as number 53 on the Hot 100. But in 1978, it went all the way to number 11 after being included on the soundtrack to Saturday Night Fever. It's probably Ronnie Baker's most famous bass line. From the same man that brought you the scintillating story of Mrs. Jones. And Mrs. Mrs. Jones. This one comes from that same record. This opening track is classic Gamble and Huff at the peak of their powers. As with Motown, the producers at Philly International would often give the musicians chord charts and leave it up to them to craft a lot of those grooves. You can absolutely hear that in this case, and Baker is hitting us with his language, driving eighth notes, 16th note flourishes, and a clear James Jamerson influence. This one's a pre-Philly International Gamble and Huff production featuring the legendary Pickett along with Harris, Baker, Young, and company in 1970. Clearly a bass-driven song. This is a young Ronnie Baker destroying a one-chord groove. There's an urban legend that's floated around for years that Baker used to rub his strings with butter to get his sound. I don't know if that's true, but whatever he did worked. From that opening bass solo, to that amazing groove. Baker cut records for a ton of labels throughout his career. Atlantic, Columbia, Philly International, Buddha, but this might be the only Motown release I could find. Produced by his buddy Norman Harris and cut at Sigma Sound Studios in 1977, this was the second version of this song. A very important song, I might add, especially given the time that it was produced, and I encourage you to look up its history. And that bass on the intro is nothing short of ridiculous. Although he got no writing credit, this song was actually created around Baker's bass line. Gamble and Huff just jumped all over that bass line and kind of wrote that song right around it, claimed former Sigma engineer Jim Gallagher. It was one of those groove sessions where Baker goes, hey, check this out, plays a bass riff, and the next thing you know, Huff is arranging that and they've got a track. Baker just made the song happen. <laughs> I 
I must mention this killer song that Baker not only played, but he wrote and produced. You rarely hear songs kicked off by a bass part like this. One of the greatest bass lines ever. This was the first of many hits for the group formerly known as the Detroit Spinners. Desperate for a hit, the group made a bet with writer-producer Tom Bell. If the song didn't hit number one, he would pay each of them $10,000. But if it did, they would buy him a Cadillac. This is what Baker's lines are all about. Simple, driving, almost lulling you in. And then every once in a while, hitting you with something amazing to let you know he's there. In a world full of wrecking crews and funk brothers and swampers, Ronnie Baker's name isn't brought up nearly enough. He cut literally hundreds of popular songs in the 60s and 70s and needs to have a place at the table whenever we talk about bass playing in popular music. Stylistically, he adapted the Jamerson style into the 1970s and arguably was the first and most important disco bass player and along with Earl Young established the template on how to play that music. I'd love to know what your favorite Ronnie Baker bass line is. Let me know in the comments. Sadly, Ronnie Baker died of brain cancer in 1990. But fortunately, he's left us with a library of some of the greatest music ever. So do yourself a favor and check it out.